Hi guys, Rosie Cassidy here from Cassidy Group. We're a family brand property developers based in the Midlands. We have amassed a property development portfolio of over £1 billion with more than 10,000 units. And we're here to help more people learn and master the art of property development. And in this video, I'm talking about how anyone, including you, can become a property developer from scratch. So one important thing I want to talk about is that Although it may seem very cloak and dagger, property development actually has very few barriers to entry. Importantly, you don't need a degree, you require no license, and you can do it with little or in fact none of your own capital, providing you're able to leverage private investors, understand bank finance, and understand how to create equity in a property deal. So, how can you become a property developer from scratch using none of your own money? We believe property development can be broken down into three simple steps, and that is how to find and identify sites, how to fund sites, and then how to manage and exit the transaction. So let's break down each of these points and look at them in a little more detail and understand what they actually mean. So finding and identifying sites. You've got two options when looking at this. Firstly, you could purchase a site that already has planning permission. This means that it's ready to be built on as soon as you complete that acquisition. Secondly, and the most important one which we would like to focus on, is acquiring sites that do not have planning permission. This means that you secure them, take them through the planning process. The result of this is that you'll be adding value to that land. In order to find off-market and direct-to-vendor opportunities, we mainly use mapping softwares such as Nimbus Maps and Land Insight. These sites that don't have planning are what we would call direct-to-vendor or off-market. This means that they're not publicly available, you won't see them on Rightmove or with any agents. And when you're dealing with the negotiations on that, you're dealing directly with that particular landowner. Now, when we're looking at sites that are off market and direct to vendor without planning permission, it's very important to quite quickly be able to understand whether or not that site has enough potential and grounds to achieve planning permission. In order to do this, you need to understand a few basic planning principles, as well as a broad overview of planning law. So in order to find sites that already have planning permission or on market sites, what we would do is firstly, we would use a software called Planning Pipe, which will give you all the planning leads off of a given local planning authority straight away on one Excel sheet that we can approach. Secondly, we will leverage our relationships with estate agents or specialist land agents to see what opportunities they currently have available and make sure they're aware that we have an active need so that they think of us as soon as they have a new opportunity come on the books. We will also leverage relationships with architects and planning consultants as often they are the first people to be aware of potential opportunities as when a landowner decides they might want to see if they can achieve planning, these two people are the first people that will be contacted. Once we identify a potential opportunity on one of these softwares, we will approach that landowner via a letter and follow-up letters in the hope to enter into negotiations and then ultimately purchase that opportunity. So now we've discussed how you would find and identify sites, the next point is how will you fund these opportunities now that you've found them. So there are two main costs within a development. Firstly, you have your acquisition cost, so the cost to purchase that land. And then secondly, if you choose to build out, you have the cost of the actual build. So with this, you've got two main options really. First of all is leveraging the money of a private investor. Now you can either do this depending on the income and the money they're willing to put in, either for the whole deal. So the private investor could fund both the purchase of the land and the build of the development. Or you can use a private investor to make up the capital you need to put in to development finance. As a general rule, when you first start out in developments, you will find that development finance, you will be able to get roughly 70% of the gross development value of that site, either from a high street bank or a, a more bespoke bank that deals in development finance. So that means you still need to make up 30% of the overall cost. Now, this is where the private investor can also come in. They can put in that 30%, 
But it's very important at that stage that both funders are aware that you're using two forms of funding. And in this scenario, the private investor would need to take the second charge over the senior debt of, let's say, the high street bank. Now, this topic on funding a site is a whole nother video in itself where we could talk for hours about the intricacies of it. But what you need to understand is that as you get better and more skilled at finding and identifying sites like we at Cassidy Group are, you're actually able to create enough equity in the deal that you can 100% fund the deal without any of your own capital, either via a bank or a private investor. So now that we've looked at the first two points, the final point that you need to understand in order to become a property developer is how you would exit a deal or manage a build. So with these sites, you will be required to take them through the planning process. And importantly, once you gain planning permission on that site, you will have added value to that parcel of land. At this point, you have two exit strategies. One is that you sell this parcel of land, which now has the benefit of planning permission, onto a secondary purchaser. In doing so, you will take what is called the planning gain, and that is the uplift in value from what you acquired the site for, for what you sold it for. The other exit strategy is that you choose to build this opportunity out. Once built, you could either sell onto the open market or refinance and retain the finished products into a property portfolio for rental. You're also able to do this if you've acquired a site with planning permission and intend to build out both exit strategies there are the same. If you do intend to build, then you need to understand how would you manage that build process. So this includes how would you find a contractor at the right price, what sort of project manager you might want and what they need to be doing for you, understanding the schedule of works, when materials need to be ordered and all the nitty gritty like that. And then finally, if you're intending to sell or refinance, you need to understand what sort of estate agents you want to be working with to sell your new homes, what sort of fees you should be paying, and then finally, looking at how you would refinance that deal in order to be able to retain it for a rental product. So that's it for this video, and I hope you enjoyed learning more about the key points you would need to know and understand in order to become a property developer. We will be doing more videos on this topic later on where we go into more detail on each of those points we've discussed today. If you're serious about learning about property development, then click the link below and you can find out more about our educational programme. For now, be sure to subscribe and comment below about the sort of content you guys want to see and we'll be sure to make that for you.